we continue now uh, with uh, Catherine Howells, who is a PhD student in Digital Humanities at King's College in London. And uh, she's going to talk about digital collections in cultural memory, tracking how users remember and reuse collection images in the digital sphere. Welcome, Catherine. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. Um, I'm Catherine Howells. Uh, I've recently completed my PhD in the Department of Digital Humanities at King's College London. And I'd like to take this opportunity to share some areas of my research um, which I think should be, should be hopefully useful to, for, to those working in the um, archives heritage industry. Um, what I've been trying to look at is, what I've been focusing on is finding ways to track and understand um, how web users make use of collection images. Um, so images that are held by museums and archives, when they are used, copied out of the archive, when they become part of the, um, uh, the web culture, uh, how are people using them? Why are people using them in certain ways? And what can that tell us about um, the way people remember images, what those images mean in our modern culture? Um, so museums and archives, uh, obviously there's research done into uh, usage in terms of access, how people access images. So we might know um, how many people access images from a, from a museum archive, say. We might know how many people download the images. We might know who if purchases them for commercial reasons and what they might be used for for commercial reasons. But once images leave the archive and they're copied away, um, it's sometimes difficult to know what people are actually doing with them. And that's what I'm trying to look at here. Um, so in terms of the kind of case study that, that my research focuses on, I wanted to understand the role of quite specific historical images um, in cultural memory, in British cultural memory. Um, so how do people, uh, these are the images here, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second. Um, they are all Second World War propaganda posters, so that was the focus. How do these images exist in cultural memory today? How do people think about them? Why are they remembered? Why are they reproduced? That kind of thing. So I used a combination of non-digital and digital methods to explore this, which I'll touch on in a second. So, my research is part of a larger project called uh, a Publishing and Communications History of the Ministry of Information. And this was a collaborative project between the Institute of English Studies and King's College London and also the National Archives um, in Britain. And this project investigated the history of the British Ministry of Information and its publications during the Second World War. So the Ministry of Information was the organisation that created propaganda uh, that gave information to the public um, and to allies abroad. And it produced a lot of material, a lot, a lot of different kinds of media uh, to inform and influence the British public and improve morale as well. So um, although the project looked, has looked at all kinds of uh, different media, it's looked at, um, it's been studying the history itself, so it's looked at the archival documents as well. My interest is really on the images. Um, and so specifically the propaganda images, that some of which have become very famous today. Um, and they still have some degree of influence in cultural memory today. So I focused on these 10 propaganda posters. Um, they are, some of them you may recognize, I think one of them in particular you might recognize. Uh, so these, um, these images are actually held by multiple archives. Um, they're held by, different ones are held by different archives, the Imperial War Museum, the National Archives, the Victoria and Albert Museum, the National Army Museum, all museums in Britain that hold some of these images. Because they're ephem ephemeral images in the sense that they were printed uh, multiple times, there are multiple copies of them in, in, in existence, so they're all over the place. Um, so this is where it's slightly um, an unusual situation because it's not like one archive holds all these images and we can, we can sort of narrow it down to one place. Um, so I'm interested in the long-term impacts of these, images, um, uh, of these images in cultural memory today. So these images are reproduced for different purposes today. They're in all sorts of different media, in books, in magazines, in advertising, on television and online. And they have been for some years, some more than others. There are some obviously quite more famous ones than others and some that have been reproduced a lot in some media and some less so. 
Um, and so some of them are easily recognised by people in Britain today, even if they don't have much connection with the Second World War, the context of these images. So to investigate this, I began with kind of non-digital methods to uh, conduct uh, image-focused surveys and interviews with members of the public in Britain. Um, so each, uh, uh, each volunteer in the survey and interview was shown these 10 images and asked questions about what do these images mean to you? Do you recognize them? Um, what, what concepts do you associate them? Um, and do you think the images are memorable? And just briefly, what this revealed was that these, some of these images, many of them, do have quite a prominent role in cultural memory. Because they've been reproduced multiple times over the course of some people's lives, they have sort of, um, they have a place in their memory so that uh, when, when a person looks at them again, lots of different memories are triggered and they start to think of family, they start to think of things they've read, films they've seen, and all these memories kind of congregate around some of the images here. Um, when they look at an image, they sometimes, they see it as an opportunity to reminisce, um, to talk about their own memories, to talk about um, their own idea of the Second World War, the history of Britain, Britain itself. So, so some of these images have come to sort of encapsulate certain quite large concepts for people. They're also um, quite individualized, so uh, people have individual personalized relationships with the images based on their own particular cultural memory of having seen them in certain places or associating them with relatives or something like that. Um, and I think this is because they, they have been reproduced so much. Um, the slogans get passed down in families, get reused, um, people see them in different media, and so they develop um, quite a power in cultural memory. So the, the next part of the research, um, which I want to just talk about a little bit in more detail, was to actually investigate how these images are used in online contexts. So we know how people think about them, um, we know which ones are remembered most by people, um, so we know how people are self-reporting uh, what they think about these images, but what's quite interesting is to see how are people actually using them when they um, when they take them from an archive, copy them out, and and um, upload them to a website. How are they doing that? Why are they doing that? What what function do they serve? Um, so I used uh, reverse image lookup uh, as a tool. Um, using Google reverse image search. So what this allows us to do is to um, search for these images by their visual content rather than relying on any metadata, on any titles, descriptions, and that kind of thing. So what it means is we can find examples of where people are using these images online, um, even if they haven't uh, given them an accurate description, even if they haven't provided tags and metadata, which in most cases people don't. Um, so Using uh, Google reverse image search, we can just um, give, give the tool the image we're looking for and um, create a huge database of the different uh, websites where that image appears. Um, this was also automated. So obviously, Google reverse image search is a little bit, can be a bit slow because you have to do it page by page. Um, so I used a tool from an organization called the Digital Methods Initiative, uh, which is based in Amsterdam, that has created a, a simple automation tool whereby uh, you can enter the image you're searching for, and then it will scrape all the results of the Google reverse image search and give you thousands, if, if there are thousands, of uh, results. So I collected 2,374 web pages that contained the 10 images that I've talked about before. So this allows us to find examples of the same images in different places and include um, versions of the images that might not as easily be found. So things like when somebody takes a photograph of an image in a museum, that will often appear in these results. Also examples where the image has been slightly adapted, so the words might have been changed or something like that, or the image slightly changed. This picks up some of those examples as well. So it gives us a bit of a broader sense of um, the kinds of ways that the image, the original image, has been used online. So to take it a bit further, 
um, and not just kind of look at the, the results, but actually try and learn something from them. Um, I wanted to understand uh, what the images were being used for, so I categorized the results uh, manually. So by looking at e each web page and determining what their function of the web page was, um, I categorized them by whether they were media, whether they were news, retail, social network, or just information-based websites. Um, I also, for those that were information-based, I categorized them by topic, the general topic of the web page itself. So um, this big list down the side of different kinds of topics that were being explored were the main topic of that particular web page. Um, so that allowed us to see a little bit uh, what the images were being used to illustrate. So were they being used to illustrate a topic like art and design, like a discussion of art and design? Were they just being used to talk about the Second World War? Or, they, or were they being used to talk about something quite different, like gardening or fashion or something like that? Um, to go a little bit more in depth, uh, in this example, I took a sample of, of the uh, 2,374 pages, because obviously there's quite, quite a lot to actually analyze in depth. Uh, we took a sample of 500 uh, web pages, um, a representative sample that included different kinds of, uh, the different kinds of function and topic of the web pages, and then analyzed these in depth, opening each web page and actually looking at the way the image is used. How is it, what is it actually doing? Is it captioned? Is it, um, is it, is it connected with other images or something like that? Or is, it, is the description next to it? What does, what does this description say? That kind of thing. Um, so I made notes on, notes on captions. I made a sort of interpretive notes on the concepts that I thought were being associated with that image. Um, again, interpretation of what audience I thought that the web page was kind of aimed at. So, so was it a particular, was it a specialist audience or was it a general audience, that kind of thing. And any alterations made to the images, things like size of the images, um, what that could tell us. So those are the, the kinds of categories I use, but this was kind of very much for my own, for the, the, the aims of this particular study. Um, and I think if this kind of approach could be applied to any research aims, any kind of um, image collection that you were trying to find out something about, find out something about the usage of, you could sort of adapt uh, these categories to suit. So the results um, give us an idea, firstly, of which images are most reproduced, which are, seem to be the most popular uh, for reproduction, those that are found, um, that are found a lot uh, online compared to those that are not found very much. Also, which images are found more often in uh, things like retail websites or um, social networks. Again, what, that, what we can draw from that in terms of what, what that means is kind of, it depends on exactly the image and what we can um, guess from the way it's being used, but that's kind of the interpretive stage. But it can give some indication of how the images are thought about by those that use them and see them. You know, are they, are they used for their aesthetic beauty? Are they being sold as products? Um, are they enjoyed for that reason alone? Or are they being used for kind of their historical detail? Is that something that's more important? Uh, looking at the topics of the web pages where the images appear, um, this gives us an idea of what kind of information the images are being used to illustrate. Um, so the top one, pop propaganda posters. So a lot of the web pages are uh, focused on propaganda posters. They're talking about propaganda posters, and the images um, here are used to illustrate that discussion. But there are some less obvious ones, uh, like fashion, crafts, um, art and design, uh, self-help, things like that, where, where people are um, using the images to uh, illustrate topics like that. Again, uh, looking at the pages in detail, um, uh, you can determine which concepts are being associated uh, with the images. And that tells us a little bit about the Second World War and cultural memory 
the, the topic of economy, the concept of economy is very important, um, that is associated very strongly with these images, which I think indicates that the Second World War, the, the images from the Second World War are associated with economy very closely. The idea of the British home front being a time of where people pulled together and um, uh, you know, looked after each other and, and looked after their, um, their homes and didn't waste, anti-waste, that kind of thing, that comes through very strongly in these results. Uh, there is also a correlation we can see between the posters that were recognised most by people in the interviews and the posters that were um, found most often online. So there is some correlation, reciprocal correlation between um, the images are reproduced a lot, therefore they are remembered by people, or the images are remembered by people and therefore they reuse them online. Um, So uh, the general kind of conclusions here are that <coughs> these posters are kind of media of the British cultural memory of the Second World War. They carry meaning, they trigger memory, and this is likely due to the fact that they have been re reproduced um, multiple times in different media over, over decades. Um, they act as uh, iconic images in the sense that they, they can symbolise quite broad concepts outside of their own particular context. Um, these concepts like Second World War, war, Britain itself, so they can symbolise quite big national concepts like that. Um, the posters are often used as artistic pieces, so they are reproduced and sold uh, commercially for aesthetic reasons, um, and they are discussed as objects of interest just for their um, aesthetic interest, for their, their as pe interesting pieces of art and design. They're also used as communication tools, as internet memes in themselves. So there were plenty of examples of posters being used to communicate, uh, being used instead of speech, you know, to, to communicate uh, emotions and ideas, um, just like uh, internet memes. So these, these methods that I've explored here can be easily adapted to different research aims, different image collections. Um, it would be quite interesting to see how effective this would be with other kinds of collections, so perhaps collections um, of images that are less uh, famous than some of these ones, or that are more unique to a specific archive to see, um, see, what, examples, see what ways they have been used um, by internet users. The results are never definitive, I should stress. Obviously, we, we are relying on Google search and there will be things missed. We can't be sure that we have all the data um, and there are also uh, a lot of manual work to be done to actually categorise and understand this data. But I think when uh, it does give us a broad sense of the uses of these different images and enables us to compare between images. Um, and when combined with other methods like interview, survey, I think it can give us quite a well-rounded idea of uh, how people talk about, how people think about the images, but also how they use them, how they encounter them online. So, uh, so I think what this might be able to help with um, is that it's uh, very important to understand um, not only whether people can access images, but actually why they're accessing them, what they're using them for, and what this can tell us about the images. This can help to, make, uh, to assist in um, making decisions about which images are uh, presented to the public, which images are promoted most, which uh, images are made accessible, how to display them, that kind of thing. Digitizing images can be concerning. It can be concerning to lose control of images, but it can also be positive and creative. Uh, we can qu learn quite a lot about the images themselves from the way that people use them um, online. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have time for one quick Quick question. Yes. Uh, I have one question, which is I really like the presentation. I think the method is adaptable quite well, easily or straightforward. But I do wonder, do you think the method would work if you had selected images that were not as iconic, that were more anonymous? Um, essentially, I think 
the numbers would be reduced. So some of the images here are not very famous, um, and they did produce fewer results. So it might just be a case of um, having fewer results to work with. But I don't think it necessarily uh, means that you couldn't find something else something quite useful from that. It would actually allow probably for more in-depth analysis of exactly how they're being used. Um, multiple searches usually bring up more and more, um, uh, more and more sets of data. So if, if, it was a, if it was an image that was, was only producing small amounts of um, data, it would be a case of, I think, repeating, repeating, repeating to try and get as much as possible so you could, you could as sure as you could be to say, I have seen all the ways, or most of the ways that they are being used. So it's, it would be less, but I think it would still be useful. Okay, thank you. Thank you.